Hi, I'm Paul Lapps, and today I'm going to be painting a dog for you. Uh, I'm going to be painting it in acrylic, and I've already taken the time to, to make the tracing and transfer it to my paper. That's ready to go. It's a Springer Spaniel Bitch, a beautiful dog. And what I want to do is I want to start with the background first. And I want to start from the top to the bottom. So without further ado, we're going to make a start, as I say, into the background. I'm going to make a large pool of color on my palette. And that's going to be covering all of this over. I'm going to use a number six flat brush. I'm going to cover a large area, so I want a large brush to do that with. And I'm going to take some lemon yellow and a lot of white. I want this very pale at the very top. And then I'm going to be putting a little bit of cobalt blue into that mix. But the majority of it is going to be a lot of lemon and a lot of white. And really pale that off. And I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. I want to vary the strokes as well. I don't want everything just one value or one uh, color as we come down. One thing it's worth noting as you do this, if you are using the flat nicely on the edge, then you can actually start suggesting little grassy blades. And as you change the color as it comes down the painting, you increase some of those marks so that it shows up even more. I'm just going to go across the other side and cover this in as fast as I can. I want it to be receding, so I'm applying quite a bit of white into this top section. And I'm going to put a little bit more blue down in here, and it's looking quite nice. And you can see we're coming down quite fast down the side of the dog. I will just bring it in and cut in under the dog's neck and around this area. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a next color. And the next color is going to be a cadmium red light. And I'm applying that directly into all the other mixes because the cadmium red light is complementary to the green. It actually suppresses the chroma or the intensity of that green. So what we're doing now is we are still using lemon yellow and we're using cobalt blue. But this time I'm knocking out a lot of this white that I put in here. And I'm coming back in with some lovely earthy greens they're not as strong as darks, but they have no white in them. So that alone creates an intensity that I wasn't using before. I'm still using the edge of the brush. As it comes down, I hope that they start to look like grasses. All the time I'm painting this, I'm actually thinking grasses. It's a nice way to just imagine what you're up to and transferring that into the painting. And now to cadmium yellow. Now cadmium yellow is a very much a red yellow. So it works very well with cadmium red light, but not so well with cobalt blue. It creates a richer, warmer, summerier green, but replaces the lemon yellow. So as we're now getting much closer to the dog and to our foreground, we're actually strengthening some of these grasses as they come in. I'm warming up these foreground pieces of grass. Add a bit more yellow into there. That looks nice. I haven't finished any tracing of the dog's foot because that's going to disappear in the grasses. And I am just blocking in some of this color under here so that I can see the dog's foot disappearing out of view. The original mix of the yellow, uh, the lemon yellow, and the blue and the white, having left some of that, I can use it again in here and just bring in some of these highlight grasses back into play. It just lifts that general dark area. And you can refine this as much as you want later on. And you can draw these grasses in in much greater detail, should you wish it. And again, with every area of the color that I've used, I can go back in and pick little bits of it up. I'm just going to loosely scumble some of these colors into this white area and using the last of this mix just to get rid of some of this and set it up for later on. The, the background is almost finished. And I've had a look at it. But there's a couple of things I just want to change before I move on to painting the dog. One of those is I want to introduce a little bit more yellow into the background. I feel that this top part is just a little bit too green. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of Naples yellow, which will subdue some of this green. I'm just going to literally put some in. I'm using a little bit more water, and a little bit more white, and the Naples yellow. I'm doing nothing more. And I'm just coming in, putting this over the green, not too much. We don't want to replace all the green with yellow. Or else we'd be going back in and we're going to be changing the whole thing yet again. And what I want to do is add some cobalt blue, a little bit more red, and some of the Naples yellow together. And just come back in with some darker marks 
that suggest some shadowy grasses behind the dog. So I need to suggest that they're there. And if the yellow is just a little bit too dull, add a little bit of cadmium yellow into that mix and redo what you've just done on here. If you find that you've mixed a color and it's too much red, instead of trying to put another color into all of that, just take a little bit off to one side of that mix and then add the color you need into it. You make a new separate pile of color, but it does help you instead of using so much paint to alter the one that you got wrong. And that's now giving me a little bit more depth as I come into the dog. When I come to do this part here, which is darker, it will show the dog up a lot nicer. Now I'm just gonna use quickly the same mix, but quite a bit more water. And I'm just gonna go in and draw some very grassy-like marks in the background. Now this is being done very thin paint, and you can get away with it this way. As far as I'm concerned, the background has been finished. I can go back in later and tweak some of the foreground grasses. What I want to pay a little attention to now is some of the shadow areas that are formed around the base of the dog and behind the dog. And for that, we need to have something that's quite cool in a blue or a violet. So we're going to mix some dark zazine purple, some ultramarine blue, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. And we're going to make quite a dark mix. So I'm going to make a fresh puddle of paint over here and I'm going to literally put this on over and above the darks. Now I'm still going to draw a little bit but essentially I'm just blocking in because this will be overlaid with brighter greens and brighter grasses later on in the painting. Yeah, that's fine, that's all we really need at this stage. Okay now with a, a thorough wash of my brush that's the background done. The foreground we've started on but now I want to set about painting the top of the dog and the head and some of the dark areas around the head. I've changed my brush to a number two long flat. So I'm gonna mix up some burnt umber, quite a bit of it, because we've got quite an area to cover, and then a nice generous amount of uh, ultramarine. This will give us our darkest dark. It's almost a black, but it's not. It's a very nice brown. So we're going to start just applying it generously over one side of the ear here, and we're going to block this ear in. Bring it on down, use the edge of the brush to draw with, and I'm picking up some nice blue, and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna into the mix just to warm it up. The ear's looking a little bit cold, so I'm going to just get that in there and make it a little warmer. Now, this is where the edge of your brush is going to be really important to you. This is why I like using some of these flats because I can use the edge to create hairs almost instantly into this area here. This is the shadow between the side of the face and the ear. And what I want to do now is just use this dark to create some hairs. And I'm going to leave some white paper because later on I can just come back in with some lighter tones and fill those areas in and just re-establish the darks. But they give the appearance of darker areas of hair forming little tussocks, little follicles of hair and using that edge again just to form hair as it flies away. These dogs are beautiful because when they run they're just a head with two almost kites running out each side of the ears. I'm using this edge of this brush just to go straight off the side of the painting and form lovely hairs on this ear. And then coming up to the top Again, just soft edge of the brush, lots of hair. Keep areas like this very, very hard edged, but where you've got a nice soft tussock of hair, use a soft edge, it just works. And they have a very funny crown sometimes. Each one of them is different, they each got character. But uh, when you actually come to paint these hairs, they're just monstrously hilarious. And as you can see, we've got this scatty looking dog, and they are. They just so run around until they run out of energy, and they just work, 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 run everywhere, searching and unearthing things and having lots and lots of fun. It adds to the character of the dog itself, and that's pretty much all we want to do. I'm just going to bring a little bit under there, just some of these shadow marks in the face and down the side of the face into this part of the ear. It's quite dark there, so we're going to add a little bit more blue. And we're going to keep painting that through. And just, that's it, that gives a nice edge to this lighter part here. Now I've got a little bit of light brown there and a little bit of dark color in there. And bring that down the side of the muzzle. Make sure you don't go too far over. You don't want to lose the line. You don't want to lose the shape of the muzzle either. And make that blend together with this part of the ear here. 
there's no rule to say that one dog is going to look exactly like this one or another one in another way. A little bit under here and re-establish from the drawing our area of the mouth. It's not going to stay this way, but uh, it certainly gives us uh, a road map as it sense to see where we've got to go in the next part. I think I like that. That's nice. It's coming on. Just check before you finish if there's any other areas around here that need more attention. I think we're done. We lit that dry and we can then start working into a little bit more detail around the ears and around the eyes themselves.